Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Moving to Orlando show. This week, we're going to talk about six things that will add value to your new build. Coming up next. Hello, everyone. Coming to you from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Warner, joined in the studio this week by my good friends, Realtor Sean Falk. Hi. Realtor Ruben Cologne. Hello. And not Realtor, but producer, Corey Fiascanar. Welcome. And uh, hope your week is is going well. Just a couple things. Um, help us out um, right now. And there's that like button, that thumbs up button right below this video. Go ahead and hit that for us. That helps us out with the YouTube algorithm and it doesn't cost you anything. And it's real easy right now. Just a little click. Um, also, if you are watching us on the Diz Unplugged uh, YouTube channel, awesome. But please head over to youtube.com slash moving to Orlando. Uh, these shows will be there as well, but we also have other stuff that goes up there that is not on the Diz Unplugged. So don't want to miss any of that. So please head over and hit subscribe when you get over there. So this week, uh, we're going to talk about something Sean has been getting a uh, crash course in uh, over the last several months. Um, and that is uh, about new builds, but specifically things you want to pay attention to that are going to add value to your new build. So Sean, what are some of these things we have to talk about? Yeah, um, some of them are uh, obviously value is subjective, and I'm not saying that this is going to make your appraisal necessarily go up depending on what it is. A lot of that has to do with the size of the house you're choosing, what's around it, what's happening in the market. These are going to be things that are going to help you living in the house and stuff you don't think about. And also when you go to show the house later, if you were to resell it, and I'm bringing a buyer through it to look at the house, then yeah, um, that's the stuff that's going to help. So the first one I had that is um, adding light hookups into the uh, into bedrooms, dining rooms, wherever you need them. And so I'm talking about like the fan. You have your fan and attached to it are actual like ceiling lights. That's something you get depending on the builder, you get like two or three throughout the home. A lot of times they'll put them in the, the owner's room or they'll put them in the living room, but you don't get them in the guest bedrooms. You don't get them around the house. For me, they're a necessity because I keep my house cold. So I like having fans and lots of stuff to keep the house cool. But if you don't put them in on the front end when the house is being built, it's about 350 per per hookup here. And if you don't put them in, then you're going to have to hire an electrician later to come back and, and hook them up and they're going to have to drill holes and they have to do all their stuff in order to do it. And without those lights, the only way to light your guest bedrooms or other areas of the house is to use your electrical outlets to plug in lamps. You're not going to have as many spaces there and you're not going to have as much light in the rooms and someday down the road when you go to resell it, you're not going to be able to get as good of photos of the room because you're using lamp light instead of a nice overhead light. And as people come in the home to tour it and they flip lights on and stuff, it's just going to seem very dark throughout. So, yeah. And I just want to say, if you hear tapping, that's my dog, Dolly, who cannot be more than five feet away from me at any given time. So she's in the studio here. Uh walking around that's how you know she's in the room it's either her or abigail yeah um yeah so i mean it's it's not a huge expense to have to add i mean you know five of them throughout the house depending on the the size of the home and how many guest bedrooms you have but definitely adding a few more of them will bring quality of life because you will have fans in the rooms you'll have light overhead in the rooms it'll help with reselling it it'll help with showing it for photos and everything and doing it on the front end is way cheaper than doing it later okay yep um another one that personally, I think is a huge plus is um, getting some upgraded tile work done in your owner's shower. And that's something that you really can't go back and change without having to redo the shower. But when I'm showing people houses, when the owner's bathroom is nice, 
they talk about it. It's it can even it can trump the the bedroom part of it going in the bathroom and having that wow factor and seeing oh my god the shower looks amazing the bathroom looks amazing it looks great but particularly with the shower having some tile work done having some texture in there really really adds a lot of value in people seeing it they remember it it photographs well and it's not that much money to do an upgrade there and change that up rather than just doing the basic tile work that's standard with the house. Okay. Did anyone have anything to say have... about it or nothing? Okay. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> well, I mean, look, anything you can do to uh, a bathroom is immediately going to, like, especially like that, it's immediately going to add value. Mm hmm. Uh, to your house, especially if you're considering for resale. Because that's a low cost <laughs> thing to do. Like it's right. not that much money, but it really gives something visually. And you're right. It's cheaper to do it when the house is being built mm -hmm. versus by far, you know, afterwards. I mean, it's going to be a lot more expensive, but you had something. for Yeah. Um, so just shower in general, pretty much like if you wanted it bigger. Uh, so if you want it to have um, the uh, two shower heads. Um, that's, that's all something that's going to cost a lot more, uh, if you decide to add it afterwards. So, uh, getting that done, uh, while the, the construction's being done, you know, adding that beforehand, it's definitely going to save you a lot of money. Um, and like Pete brought up, like, you know, the shower, the bathroom itself and the kitchen itself are like the two major things that like, I remember when I go into a house, like those are the things that are going to like, how upgraded are the, the countertops? How upgraded is the shower? And those are the main things that are going to jump out at me as soon as I walk into the house. So well, I, I definitely would get those done as soon as, like, before it's built. Well, when you when you go in new build, so it's, it's funny because what's going to happen is if you're a bathtub person, like, there's bathtub people and there's shower people. I'm a shower person. A bathtub to me is a big waste of space for me because I'm not going to use it. So... I don't like it, but there's other people that are like, the house must have a bathtub. I absolutely have to have one. And I get it for your guest bathrooms. And usually those end up having one because that's usually where you would wash like a baby or a toddler or whatever it, by comparison. And you would want a bath. But um, in, in the owner's bathroom, that's usually not at this point. They're not putting in bathtubs because they're not getting as much use, except for if you are somebody who doesn't want a bathtub then lo and behold every house that you want to do as a new build is going to be the one builder who's like yes we do include bathtubs and you have to pay extra if you don't want the bathtub so it happens the opposite way around no matter what it happens every time i take somebody in a house but if you don't want the bathtub you can extend your shower and that's an option that you can do and it makes a really long shower and so they'll either add a second shower head on the other end of the shower, or um, they might add a bench down at the other end, and, but it's further away than where the water goes. For the life of me, I can't figure out why this is happening. Like, I don't get it. I don't, it looks cool to look at, but then when I think about it, because the first time I saw one, I'm like, oh my God, that is the longest shower. And look how many shower heads there are. There's like three or four. And then I was like, yeah, this is like, being on the baseball team like I, I don't I rarely shower with other people like why are they I don't know when this is going to come up as a thing that you need to do so if somebody knows out there like what the appeal of that is well, please a lot let me know I think a lot of couples do shower together they do um, I like, don't I can't get that because it's like the bathroom is like that's a one-seater man I nobody comes in the bathroom um you know one at a time uh I've always been that way but I know that uh, there are a lot of people that yeah do, I mean, I remember we actually, I mean, again, like, you know, my, my girlfriend, and I would love that. But like, we actually saw the, um, uh, it was a pink house that we saw. I think it was over in Winter Garden and had that uh, uh, two shower heads. And that's something that really excites me. I like the idea of having two shower heads in the shower and a bigger shower. She likes a bathtub more. But for me personally, I like having more room in the shower. And I don't know. See, I'm a big fan of the body showers. Um, yeah. That would be fun. You have like yeah. the rain, the, you know, the rainfall shower head. And then you have the body jets on the walls. Um, 
that's oh, yeah. pretty that's cool. cool. Have you ever seen anybody like opt to steam room in their bathroom? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's nice. Yeah. But I, I don't get when it's really long. Like I, I understand like, oh, if couples like wanted to shower together, but like, I don't, if the shower heads at the other end of the room and you're just like, Hey, like, how you doing down there? <laughs> like, that kind of thing. I don't get that. Like, I just don't know. It just really is confusing to me. But, but it does have it, a pop. It does have it a does, wow factor, it does, which yeah. is going to help you when yeah. you want to sell the house. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, one of those decisions you got to make at the beginning like do i want this extended shower is that important to my life or would i rather have a bathtub so that wasn't another point that was just like a sidebar but um uh another one for me or we'll say number three number three is uh outdoor electrical lights uh or outdoor electrical outlets and you typically you get one or two with a house but if you're somebody who likes to decorate for christmas a lot or if you're somebody who wants to um hook stuff up outside like let's say you want to um have you know kids birthday parties or stuff by the pool or anything you're gonna want outdoor electrical outlets and build when you're building it that's the time to put them in it's a couple hundred dollars per outlet and personally i would have one on each side of my house so that i can decorate for christmas because and like pete decorates a lot for christmas so you need the outlets and if they're not there that's it and to hire an electrician to come back and do it is a lot of money right, to we, go through the stucco and the in the stuff yeah we were talking about that um before we started recording that i had that done where i had electrical outlets put all around the house and it cost it was between somewhere between three and five thousand mm-hmm. dollars to have that done um and so yeah it's something if you can have if, if you definitely want it. If you don't use them, it doesn't hurt you, right? But you're going to want to use them at some point. You're going to be out in your backyard. You're going to be out in your front yard. you will be like, damn, I wish there was an outlet here. Mm-hmm. Um, and trust me, trust me, it's going to happen. It's going to come up. Even at my house, I have um, like my leaf blower or whatever, like just to get, get like after I get done cutting the grass, it's on my concrete, it's on my stuff and I want to get rid of it. And I'm like literally getting extension cords and hooking from inside my garage, having the garage door open and just having to get extension cords long enough to wrap around to my backyard because that's the only thing, you know, that's the only way I can do it because I don't have any electrical outlets outside. Right. Yeah. Uh, number four is... Uh, Upgrading to level one or two uh, for your cabinets. So when you buy your house, you it's going to come with the standard cabinet level. And the it's kind of like, so typically if you open the cabinet door, you can kind of like knock on the middle of it. And if it sounds like paper, kind of like. A really like, hollow. A really hollow, I guess. Yeah. Um, then that's the lower quality. And then for each level up, there's usually four levels. Um, you can upgrade to you know better quality and it's not so much the quality for me that obviously you want better quality it's the color and the standard color is like standard wood looking color and you can't get it a color if you don't do the upgrade and it's not that much i mean it's a couple thousand usually depending on how much how many cabinets you have and how much there is with it but it's it's a good upgrade because usually when you upgrade to level two, you get your choice of white or black or and they'll add a little bit of design work in it. And it really, really pops in the kitchen like it really I mean, the wood look is very 90s, very early 2000s. Now it's all about that really clean white cabinet look and you don't get that in the base level. So it's very worth it to come in and see this bright open kitchen that has a ton of white cabinets compared to like these dark wood cabinets that are very plain. And it's not like cherry or, you know, this very nice looking wood. It's really plain looking. Right. Uh, no, I agree a hundred percent with that. Again, like, like I said earlier, the two biggest areas that to me, when I walk into the house, the kitchen and the bathroom, and if those are upgraded. Those are nice. They have those upgraded cabinets that for me specifically, I like those black cabinets. Um, and then, you know, like a like a black uh, black like granite um, countertop, like that. That's the type of thing you that want kind black of black cabinets and a black countertop. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I, I, I saw dark. I, I saw I, I yeah. Maybe I'm just like a dark person, I guess. Um, no, I like my I like my black uh, cabinets, my black like granite like countertops. I saw in a couple houses I've been to so far, and it 
it, it just looks really nice in the kitchen. And I think that's one of the biggest things I look for when I walk to the house as soon as I walk in. How's that kitchen look? How's those cabinets look? Kitchen makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. yeah. Makes 100%. all the difference in the world. And honest to God, if you have the extra money to do it, I know I would do it. Get a second layer of cabinets that go all the way to the top of the ceiling. I love that look. I It always, to me, just makes the house look better personally i would add that second layer of cabinets i would use the like the glass doors that kind of have like the cutout in it put lights in it put some crap in there that looks pretty that like you're never going to touch because it's like 10 feet up so like no one's ever going to get up there but it looks really pretty like as people come in i just think it adds a lot to the See, house i look at that and i say okay i gotta clean those um, I'm, you don't have and, to do anything with them. They're they're well, they're there. gonna get dust. I mean, they, sometime they, every now and then, but they're gonna get the. It's you know, you still got to get up there and clean yeah. them. I mean, but you'd have to get up there and clean above the cabinets anyway. Like if you had like gap cabinet space. That's yeah, but it's easier to take the Swiffer and yeah, that's true. You know, run run across. I just the top I, of the I love the look of it. That's not like on the list because it's not something that's going to add tremendous value to the house. I just like the look. So yeah. and just like everything on this list, it's going to cost a lot more to actually have to take those cap- old cabinets out and put in these new ones. Mm-hmm. So it's it's easier just to do at the beginning before as it's being built. Okay, number five uh, is going to be upgrading the size of your kitchen island. It is minimum about three hundred dollars to get the larger size island. Really? Um, it's yeah, just like only three hundred dollars. Yeah, um, if you do it at the beginning, if you wait, it's gonna be a lot. But um, so if, for like a smaller house, there are some. If you want the jumbo jumbo island, it's a couple of thousand, maybe one thousand, two thousand, somewhere in there. Um, also, depending on whether you have quartz quartz on top or granite they need to find a piece of granite that size or else you're going to have a seam which is fine if you have like a cut seam but you want it tactfully done at least and making sure that it's done well but um it's not that bad to add one in it adds so much to the house to have like a really big island in the center of the kitchen and the main factor for me with it is that you have more space to seat people um you have that bar counter to eat at and i'm not a formal dining room person i never grew up with a formal dining room my house everybody there was a small table you ate there Maybe a little bit. And then eventually, once I got a little older, everybody just kind of ate in front of the TV. And that was our life. So I'm not too worried about having a a big table. And sitting at the bar counter at the island and eating, it's a really good way to, you know, we had that in one house. And it was a good way for me to talk to my mom because she would be in the kitchen, like cooking or cleaning or something. And I would sit there and actually have conversation rather than being in a separate room and having my own thing. But it obviously increasing the size of the island, putting chairs there and bar stools that will allow you to sit there and eat can eliminate the need to have a larger table over, you know, in a formal dining room. So you could use that space as an office or something else rather than needing it. And then you can add like a more of like a breakfast nook sized table instead of having a huge like six or eight person table to take up more space. No. Um, again, agree. Um, my girlfriend and I, and this is, I guess, free advertisement for uh, IKEA. But like, we were walking through IKEA, and she could not like the biggest thing that she would look every time we walk into those little like sample rooms they have, like created for everybody. Every time we walk into one of the kitchen ones, she would immediately look over the island. She's like, "I want that. I want that. I want that." So adding that is definitely, or make uh, making it bigger is definitely something you should definitely uh, do before uh, the construction's done. Yep. And uh, my last one is the outside elevation. Um, Elevation is the look of the house. It is not physically how high up or down it is in regard to the earth. Um, It is the look from the outside. So as you're driving through, especially in a neighborhood, let's say there's four or five different uh, home styles and they always have like a name. There's like Ashbrook 2 and like you know, the Lindsay model and stuff. I don't know where they come up with them, but they uh, they always have their thing. And so when you drive through a neighborhood, you'll see four or five different styles of houses and they all look pretty similar. But there's one basic one that comes with it. And that's usually going to be elevation A or elevation one. And then you can upgrade and they do these weird jumps to like elevation L is like the second one. And then it goes to K and then it jumps to like x and it's just weird like it's not like a b c d and um i i'm sure it's something with corporate where they do it i don't know but upgrading to from one 
So like the standard is usually going to be, let's say you have a two story house. It's usually going to be completely flat on the front and you see it. It's flat. That's where you're at. No big deal. At going up one elevation will kind of add a little bit of depth into the house where maybe the uh, they'll add like a tiny a little bit of a porch awning area, or maybe they will push back one part of the upstairs. So there's just when you see it visually from the road, it's not this one flat wall like a skyscraper like the beginnings of a building or something and adding that and then of course once you go up another elevation that usually gives you a little bit of stonework like they're like oh we'll add like the the bottom half of the house we'll get some rocks and stones that we'll do and then of course the final one is like you know there's gables and there's all sorts of stuff that you can you can get with it but I think going up at least one elevation really adds a lot of curb appeal to the house. Um, if you don't care, the standard's perfectly fine. Get the flat house. Like I, It's something I used to think, oh, I wouldn't care about. But the more houses I get to see, and especially when you're building in the same neighborhood as everyone else, not that it will add value in the resale of your home. But if you're the house in the neighborhood that does have a different look, that has some depth to the exterior, not only are you going to set yourself apart from the other ones in your neighborhood that didn't do it, because any at any given time, there could be five, six, seven, ten 10 houses in the same neighborhood that are for sale. Um, you're also going to get click throughs on the first pictures. Um, so even on our MLS, on Zillow, on realtor.com, the first photo is usually the outside of the house. It's yeah. a shot of the front. And if your wall, if it's flat and somebody immediately says they don't like it, they're never going to click any further. They're not even going to click the photos to see what's in it because they hated That's the way it point. looked on the outside. And so it might be worth it to upgrade that just a little bit. If you think you might sell the house down the road and it could really help. And, sidebar with it choosing colors so typically speaking you get these like color palettes when you go in and they'll say okay there's like this model or oh, the whole neighborhood has like 20 color palettes and you'll pick the main color could be you know charcoal gray and then the side color is like baby blue and then this side color is like a navy blue and that's going to be the trim is going to be this the main thing's gray but they have some colors that are like hunter green with like olive and with brown and that kind of stuff going neutral in my opinion is better and going lighter is better because we do get cracks in our stucco here in uh, Orlando and in Florida. And after a few years with your new build, it is the house is going to settle. You're going to have these cracks and you're going to see the shape of the cinder block with it. The first thing you want to do is patch it and repaint it. And if you picked Hunter green, or if you picked dark Brown, or if you picked blue or anything like that, or like a darker color, the minute you paint onto it, you're going to get a lighter shade mm -hmm. and it's not going to match what you already had, or you're going to get a darker shade in some cases, and it's not going to match. And as soon as it dries, it, you're still going to see the line. You might as well have just left the crack at that point because they're going to know what you did. So the lighter of a color that you could get, the better you can kind of blend it until it's time to repaint the whole exterior of the house which is quite a bill at some points to paint the exterior of a house. So um, choosing lighter colors really helps. I know it looks good and you only get to see like a little square of what it is. So you don't really see the whole house. Some of the better builders have like models, uh, photo models of each where they've done like artist renderings of what it would look like. But getting some wonky colors can really affect, I mean, if I pull up and it's like a, you know, a really pink house or a really green house. There's a lot of people that's going to not appeal to at all. Right. So keep it in mind. Okay. That was six. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was six. sorry. That was six reasons. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Six yeah. reasons, six upgrades you want to pay attention to, yeah. to get value out of your new build. And that is going to do it for our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next Wednesday with another edition of Moving to Orlando. Have a great week, folks.